Make sure you guys hit the subscribe button if you guys are enjoying the content that we're throwing up. And uh, make sure you guys hit the like button if you enjoy the video. And yeah, let's begin. What's going on guys, this is Rob, and you guys really enjoyed the first part of Silver Surfer Black. You guys really seem to love that, so we're gonna continue this. But a couple things, because I was reading your all's comments, a couple things to keep in mind. The, the conclusion of the main King in Black story, where Silver Surfer shows up again to fight the King in Black, and he's like all black and different stuff like that, that takes place after this story. This story is when Silver Surfer first meets Null, the symbiote god. So this takes place long before the events of King in Black even begin. Um, So as we're kind of jumping back to the past, and then we'll jump back to the present once we actually pick back up with King and Black. The other thing is you guys constantly ask me where we get the music from in our videos. Uh, we use Epidemic Sound and, and it really just kind of goes from there, right? We just sort of pick and choose based on what we want. Um, if you guys want, I can have my editor compile a list of the tracks that we use for Epidemic Sound and, and post some of those down in the in the comments or in the description or something like that. But that's where we get our audio from. We, we're set up, or we're, we're really partnered with uh, Epidemic Sound and, and uh, use the music that's provided there. Um, so in the last video, we basically talked about how Silver Surfer had kind of been sucked through this black hole and basically ended up at some point uh, along the line where he meets Null for the very first time. What this does is it basically tells us that this journey the Silver Surfer went on through this black hole took him to the very beginning of all creation, right? The very beginning of all things, or seemingly the very beginning of this universe, not really the beginning of the multiverse or anything, but the very beginnings of this universe. Now, given the way things are transpiring here, this looks as though he goes all the way back to the time and encounters Null before Null was defeated by the Celestials and cast back into to his own dimension. That looks to be the case. But the important thing here is that Silver Surfer facing off against Null, that for those of us who are, are huge Silver Surfer fans, we always recognize the fact that the Silver Surfer's power has waxed and waned a lot over the years, right? And that's one of the things that we talked about really in, in different videos that we've made, that if you go back and you read the old Jim Starlin Silver Surfer style stories, that in those stories, he was wildly overpowered. Like he was just immensely powerful. He could time travel and do all crazy, all kinds of crazy different things. Over the years, his powers have been decreased a lot and a lot of that I think was just for the 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 idea of just telling a particular story but why whatever manner and whatever means Marvel's really decreased the power of a lot of their characters over the years that's kind of a common trend if you read Marvel comics back in the 70s and 80s characters were a lot more ferocious they were a lot more powerful uh, but if you read them now they're a lot weaker than they used to be which is kind of ironic here you know looking even looking at that and how powerful the surfer used to be and looking at this and saying okay so maybe Donnie Case is taking the surfer back to the way his power used to be in the end it still doesn't matter because Null overpowers him so quickly. This battle takes place in seconds, right? It's in mere seconds, right? Silver Surfer goes to launch an attack against Null. Null sends his living abyss towards the Silver Surfer and then basically ensnares him. Just like that. It's, it's so quick. And then this is actually a, a, a great display of Donny Cates to show us how powerful Null was, or Null is, when we first really saw a full-on appearance of Null going against somebody who was a space-faring character like the Silver Surfer. Even though the Silver Surfer's powers have been reduced a lot in comparison to his older stories, he's still immensely powerful. And I think that, you know, people know enough about the Surfer to know how powerful he is, even if they don't know the nuances of what he was capable of, you know, each of his feats or abilities or, you know, the crazy things he does done over the years, stuff like that. You know, even if people don't necessarily know those things, they know enough to know he's exceedingly powerful. And so having him face off against Null, who overpowers the Surfer in mere moments, is a great display of Null's power. And this is what's kind of crazy about this, is that it's not enough to capture the Surfer. He in turn says, like, I am the god of all darkness, right? I am the god of, of everything. Fly as fast as you can, faster than light, it doesn't matter. At the end of the day, you are always going to arrive in the dark, right? There's no way you can overcome me. There's no way you can get past me. I am in immutable, indestructible force, right? And as this happens, the Silver Surfer, who's already weakened from his trip through the black hole, begins to get even weaker, right? Begins to get even more tired, right? Consistently more and more tired. Now, the thing to understand here is that while the Silver Surfer is quite literally fleeing for his life, with him being taken over by the Living Abyss, the stance of Null is, even if you make it through that black hole, when you get to the other side, you'll still be in my servitude. And that's exactly what happens. That was Silver Surfer being totally ensnared by Null and then brought back down to where Null's at that he emerges as what's called the Void Knight. He's basically a servant of Null. And I'm just going to say it right now, right? He looks amazing, right? The artwork in and of itself is a, is a little more exotic than I'm used to. I'm by no means against it. I like the way that it looks, but it's a little more exotic than I'm used to. But the way Silver Surfer looks as the Void Knight, he looks amazing, right? He looks absolutely 
awesome here. And and that's and it's always one of those things where I always kind of wondered what what you know Silver Surfer would look like if he was taken over by a symbiote. And this is the answer that we get right now. The crazy thing about this is that when he is essentially like his whole board and everything is restructured by Null, and he is by all standards of measurement a, a servant of Null, then immediately this voice comes out of nowhere and says, "Harold, brace yourself!" Right, and just totally blows off, just incinerates the symbiote, the Living Abyss, directly off of Silver Surfer and allows him to return to his normal self. And then he basically tells him like, "This is going to hurt." And in this moment, when the when when all that symbiote is just is burned off of him, then Silver Surfer returns back to his normal self, right? Goes back to, to Silver Surfer the way he's supposed to be. And then the Herald, you know, when Silver Surfer goes back on the offense to face off against Null, this voice says like, listen to me, Herald, like you cannot defeat him. You cannot beat Null. If you try, you will perish. He's simply just too far beyond you. Strength, speed, durability, his command over the, li over, over the living abyss, you do not have the power to defeat this guy. So run, follow my voice, right? Run as fast as you possibly can. And that's what the Silver Surfer does, right? He books, right? Immediately takes off this, takes off out of this, this world, right? This living abyss world that he was sitting on, the one that's basically monitored or really controlled by, uh, by Null and just bolts, right? Just grabs the surfboard and just flies as fast as they possibly can. And the indication that's given here is that he's reaching the speed of light, right? That's the indication that's given here. It's, it's not explicitly stated. It's not like, and then I fly at 186,000, what is it? Thousand miles per second squared. That's not exactly what we're told. <laughs> Instead, it's just like, he's flying as fast as he possibly can and he feels like the light in him you know that that kind of a thing you know like i feel like i'm moving with the light that kind of a situation but no you know basically kind of breaks off the chase right he stops for a moment and then says okay if that's how it's going to be then that's how it's going to be now here's the thing no basically tells his 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 guards you know stay here keep an eye on this place and then goes to chase after norn rat and on the surface you would think that because Noel is so far beyond silver surfer that there wouldn't really be any reason for him to chase him right it's like okay fine whatever he got away but the reality is a silver Silver Surfer is immensely powerful. He is an exceedingly powerful character. And so it's one of these things where it's in the interest of Null to make the Silver Surfer his own agent, right? To take him over and to bring him into his subservience so that he can kind of continue his quest to blink out all the stars and destroy existence, that kind of a thing, right? So it really is in his best interest to do that. And that's why he basically guns after him. And as this guy is, is talking to him, right? Talking to, to the Silver Surfer, jumping back to, to Norrin, as this guy's talking to him, you know, it's kind of like, he's like faster, you know, keep going faster. And he refers to him as Norrin. And this throws the Silver Surfer off. He's like, how do you know who I am? And he's like, yes, I know you're Norrin Rad from Zinla, the Silver Surfer, the herald of a being called Galactus, right? The destroyer of worlds, but you are repentant, right? You are basically death. It weighs on you. And I know what you struggle with. I know that you wish for the sweet release of death. I know that you believe you deserve it, right? Because of all the worlds that have died at the hands of Galactus, worlds that you led him to, countless civilizations, innocent peoples who were simply living their existence and then obliterated by the devourer of worlds and his desire to satiate his hunger. I know that you have caused all this and i know that guilt weighs on your mind but understand that's not the way it is right that's the that's the role that was imparted upon you but you didn't do it out of malice you didn't do it out of out of a desire to watch things die right you did it to save your world that was your punishment for saving your world if you want to call it such a thing and while you are bringing galactus to other worlds galactus in and of himself is not a, a, a violent being right he's not a hateful being he plays a role in the universe right he's no different than a star going supernova and wiping out its solar system or a black hole moving towards some kind of a galaxy and sucking everything in it. It's just a force of nature, right? It's just the way in which the universe functions. And so ultimately, uh, Null ends up catching up to the Silver Surfer and the Silver Surfer uses a portion or really a, a fragment of his of his energy to basically blast out, uh, you know, to, to try to blast away from the from Null by or really just kind of fly into him by flying into his dragon and then incinerating the whole thing. But remember, as he does this, he's using his power up, that he's consistently weak. And it's one of these things where it seems to really point to this idea that the the longer he's away from his current time and in a universe of light, the more of his power cosmic that he drains, the weaker he becomes because he needs to rest to effectively recharge it. But if he's constantly on the run and constantly using more power that he can bring back through recharging, then he just becomes progressively weaker. This and the fact that he's experiencing the taint of being possessed by uh, by Null or being controlled by Null is what starts to turn his body black. That's what turns him into Silver Surfer Black to a degree. And so basically, you know, in the, the weakened state that he's in, he grabs his board, he says, just follow the, follow the voice, right? The board, basically keeps taking it, right? It keeps it keeps sending him in this direction. And finally, they arrive to their destination, the being that's been talking to him this entire time. And this being turns out to be Ego the Living Planet. And the one thing it says to the Silver Surfer is, now that you're here, and now that we can combine our forces together, my question to
question to you is, do you want to kill a god? With that being said, guys, we're going to bring this video to an end. If you are new here to Comics Explained, make sure you guys hit the sub button to become part of the Rob Corps. If you guys enjoy this video, make sure you drop a like, and I will catch you all later. Peace.